Welcome once again to Grim 3D and Modification Monday. Today I'm modifying the Maker Select Plus with this touchscreen LCD slant enclosure thing that I printed out. This is from Thingiverse. Um, the attribution's in the comment below. Uh, I'm liking this one. It's got a nice rounded feel to it. It's very smooth. It printed fantastically and for a future modification Monday, it has a slot on the side for the micro SD card that is used to upgrade the LCD screen for an updated firmware. Stick around. So the first thing I'm going to have to do is disassemble the front part of this printer right here to get the touchscreen LCD out of there. I have the power completely unplugged and this is on my desk or my workbench here that's uh, not where it sits when it prints. But I have my handy dandy silicone work mat here. Uh, fantastic purchase, by the way. If you want to know where I got it from, send me a message in the comments. Alright, first thing is probably I'm going to have to remove these lower Z braces. This is a Z brace kit that I bought off Amazon. Yes, you can print them, but I wanted it to be all metal. And I really enjoy these Heim joints with the fully adjustable rod that doesn't have any parts on it that are sharp, that can stick out, that will cut you or you can ram your knuckles into. I've actually enjoyed them quite a bit. I've had them on this Maker Select for a long time. Then of course I have to remove these, these Allen screws that are for the guide rods. Let's get those undone and out of there. And the front of this apparently comes right off. Now I'm going to need to remove this, the backing plate for this LCD but I'm going to be very careful not to disrupt or disturb this ribbon cable as I do it. I need to get the LCD out of here, but I'm fairly sure that this metal case is not required for my slanted LCD holder. Screws are kind of long, but the threads are pretty shallow. So, I want to be careful with that when we tighten them back down. Not to over tighten or to strip any threads. So even a short Allen wrench can give you enough torque to strip those small threads. So that's what I'm after right there. I'm going to remove carefully this ribbon cable, set that aside because I need to put this back together because this is going to stay part of the machine. And the ribbon cable can come through that hole in the side. As the front part of the printer goes back on. Got two 
large screws that not only go in the printer but hold on my Z brace, my all metal Z brace. And then I'm going to fit my plate in there, but I'm going to need some longer of these two millimeter screws so I can put in the outer ones. And since this doesn't <clears throat> cover those screws, I can tighten them later, but I just want them in there. I've had really incredible luck with this screw set for when I need different size screws. So let's see what size I'm going to need. Actually, I am going to go with the longer ones. They may stick out in the back just a shred, but I want to make sure they grab a bunch of threads so that everything stays tight and there's nothing that's going to get in the way. Okay, let's see what that size looks like. Perfect. So two of those, which are three by 12 millimeters. And a washer. And then I'm going to put my touch screen, work it in there. It's got a couple of holes that it's supposed to line up with in the print. Some more three millimeter screws to lock it in. Sure, these don't have to be tight in the slightest. They just have to stay in. That one is going to need a shorter one because it's only going through one PC board. Well, it looks like there's only one set screw to hold it in there. There it is. It's looking pretty good. Now I'm going to go ahead and reconnect the ribbon cable. I think I'm going to tip my printer over for this job so I can get my fingers where they need to be. And real quick before I button this down, since I can't touch anything anyways, I'm going to turn the power on and make sure that the display works. So the display is apparently working fine, except the touch is not working at all. So I will try to seat that ribbon cable one more time.
All right, second time I got it. Display is working. Touch screen is working. I am going to put one of these screws in before I try to, or maybe both of them, before I try to flip it over. I don't want to put any stress on that ribbon cable or pull it out. Second one holding up for me. I can turn it back right side up. I think that looks fantastic. Try it one more time, make sure all the connections are still in place. I get the display. I get the touch. I get movement. So shut it down again, unplug the power, tighten these everything down. First these. the new screws and they did not well they went through maybe one thread and then the original allen screws and there you have it Slanted touchscreen has a micro SD port on the side for upgrading. I want to throw on ADVII firmware because it allows you to adjust and calibrate your machine right from the touchscreen rather than from a computer over USB. So that's it for today. Thanks for joining me for Modification Monday here on Grim 3D. Remember, subscribe if you want to. Smash that bell, keep the comments civil, and we'll see you out there.